think it's on. Check it out. See. It is on. It is on. Welcome. Great to be here. Before we get started, there's two very important people you failed to introduce, and I need to make sure. I know who they, they are. I didn't have names, but you They're can, our, you our can address pilot, them. Our uh, pilot, Brian and Jason, if you guys will stand up. They need to feel some love because they got to get me back home. Listen, they're regulars here, man. We see them every, a couple times every they year. Are. They're going to have him. They've got a couple of softball questions. I fed them on the way down. <laughs> All right, before we, before we dive into all things Razorbacks, I think we need to, uh, to make mention of this, if, uh, is that one thing we sort of do on Hunter is that we teamed up with the uh, Texas Sports Hall of Fame and the Southwest Conference Hall of Fame, and we, for the last, I guess, five years now, Kevin, I think, have been uh, handling the uh, Southwest Conference Hall of Fame induction, and we've got our new class for 2019 to introduce. So if you'll uh, strike it up, uh, give me the uh, logo there and give me some music there. I will read to you our honorees for this year. Coming up, I believe, I don't have the date in front of me, I think it's uh, no, late November. Uh, John Barnhill, uh, Delmonica Delhorny uh, Hawkins, women's basketball, Paul Donovan, men's track, the great Scott Hastings, basketball, our own Bruce James in football. How about that? Johnny Ray, one of the great baseball Razorbacks of all time. John uh, Richardson, obviously uh, posthumously, and uh, one of the first African Americans to ever earn a scholarship at the University of Arkansas. Glenn Rose, uh, a guy who, it's amazing, was played basketball for the Razorbacks in the 20s, came back to coach the Razorbacks and won five Southwest Conference championships. Uh, he'll be going in along with Lisa Sparks Walker, track and field. How about, let's give them a big round of applause, all those honorees. You know, John Barnhill, obviously his name is still obviously at Barnhill. We saw the news with Coach Musselman. So a great class. Any comments on that? Well, I do want to comment that November 11th is clearly written on your sheet of paper, just not in that big type where you've got it. that? See, look at, look at that. I, I need your help. Yeah, yeah. November 11th. Thank you. No, I, November 11th. We, we, we sincerely appreciate uh, the Touchdown Club and their involvement with that Southwestern Conference Hall of Fame so we can honor uh, those men and women that played in the Southwestern Conference during that era and, and properly recognizing what they achieved while they are Razorback student athletes. Have you guys enjoyed coming to that over the years? Do you like that? Have you been to the Southwest Conference Hall? It's a great, it's a ba it's a great banquet, and uh, it's, even though we're a football touchdown club, we enjoy honoring all the sports. And we mentioned women's basketball, track and field, all of them. And to be able to honor, obviously, John Richardson and Barnhill and, and Glenn Rose, and uh, it will be a fantastic event. You're right, November 11. Uh, let's dive into. Uh, I will say this. So, uh, you know, I mentioned last week we haven't done a lot of Q and A with our with our membership, just because we have we, our guests have been. You know, we have a lot of ground to cover, but I think it's always nice to have this with the U of A athletic director. And you didn't hesitate a bit. Yeah, we're going to do q and It doesn't matter what the score of the game was. I'm doing Q&A afterwards, right? I get to pick the question, so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's, let's dive into football. So one of the things I wanted to point out to everybody here, Matt, I think you've got the picture. So you were in two hats as you watched the game and as you're involved. So that is your son, uh, Jake. He, is a, uh, he was a standout uh, linebacker out of high school in Texas. I went to Colorado as a walk-on uh, with Mike McIntyre was there. And when Mike uh, left, he decided to come and walk on to the University of Arkansas. So he's a redshirt freshman. So you're wearing two hats, you know, as a, as a dad and as an athletic director. So when you see a game like yesterday, so tell me sort of the different kind of emotions you have, both maybe as one as a, as a, a dad and one as an athletic director. Well, the emotions are really the same. We, I've got on a Saturday, I have 120 kids. Uh, that are out there on that football field. 120 kids that have put in their blood, sweat, and tears uh, during the spring, during the summer, during the fall, and that have an opportunity only 12 times during the fall. And so uh, those are all my kids. And, of course, uh, Jake is a member of that team, and I'm very proud that he's out there. But the emotions are really no different. Um, I'm very proud to see him run through that A on Saturdays, and I'm proud to see him on the sidelines. But he's just one of 120. So the, the emotions are really the disappointments, not any different because Jake's a member of that team. That disappointments the same we we missed the very beginning of, of sully's video there it, we got the second shot of you shooting at the free throw so you were a basketball a collegiate basketball player so you understand what it takes to be you know successful in, in college sports so as a former athlete how is it again you're affiliated this is your team the Razorbacks watching a game where you're supposed to win and you don't win well, I've been involved in those as a student athlete. I've been involved for 27 years in many of those games in various sports uh, as an administrator. And that's what, when you put um, 
kind of your livelihood in the hands of 18 to 22 year olds. That's sometimes what you get uh, games that you should win, like the game Saturday versus San Jose State. You don't necessarily get the result that you expect, and uh, that's what makes college sports so incredible because a team like San Jose State, that was their Super Bowl. And quite honestly, they came out and played like it was their Super Bowl. They played better than our team played on Saturday. And they were the team, if we'd come back and won that game, we probably didn't deserve to win that game. San Jose State did. And so um, it was disappointing uh, from, from that perspective. But one of the things I've learned in 27 years and having been through some highs and lows in uh, 10 years as an athletic director is the highs are never too high and the lows are never too low. And uh, that's one of the things I've really tried to find that balance is never get too excited like when we win against Colorado State and never get too low when we have a game like we did Saturday night. Uh, college uh, sports, they're big business. Obviously, college football the biggest. So, you know, is there an extra frustration factor at all that when you, when you pay a team like San Jose State, you pay them a million and a half to come play, and you lose those kind of games. That, does that make it even more frustrating, or are they all equal? Does it matter at all? It, it has nothing to do with the money. I mean, the money, quite honestly, gives our fans an opportunity to have another home game where we don't have to go play San Jose State and return that game either the year before or the following year. And so that's what the money is about. The frustration is the same. It's a game we should have won, David, and we didn't win that game. And it's not about, you know, a million and a half dollars. That was for our fans so they can have another opportunity to see the Razorbacks play um, in that stadium. But uh, it's frustrating just because we lost a game that we, where we had better talent and that's a game we should have won we always talk about on our radio show uh, over the years you know the, the, uh, the Razorbacks have a, a, a great history you know going back to you know the 60s and 70s with Frank Burles and Lou Holtz and all that and so we always ask the question what what should be the expectation of our fan base we're from a small state uh, don't have a lot of money don't have a lot of D1 recruits what do you do you, do you see there should be an expectation of how many wins, how often we should challenge to go to Atlanta. Do you, do you view it that way? Do you have one? Well, as a fan, you can have the expectations you want to have. I mean, that's uh, you, you do your research as a fan. You, you choose to be a fan. And uh, my expectations right now, um, as we're in 16 games into the Chad Morris era, is that we continue to get better as a football program. And we see tangible ways that we're getting better. Saturday, quite honestly, we, we took a step backwards. We took a step backwards. We did not get better. Uh, Coach Morris will be the first to tell you. We talked yesterday morning, as we do every Sunday morning, whether it's a win or a loss, and he was very disappointed in the performance. And he will be the first to tell you we took a step backwards um, on Saturday and how we performed on the field. And I think, you know, you look at, uh, again, I'm not putting the blame on our 18 to 22-year-olds. I mean, we've got to do a great job as a staff and a great in our preparation, the development of our game plan, how we integrate that game plan and practice during the course of the week, and then how we execute that game plan. And we did not do a very good job. And whether it's the fact that uh, we were listening to all the accolades and patting ourselves on the back after a great fourth quarter against Colorado State, and we all felt we had uh, turned the corner, myself included. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is right now as a football program here at the University of Arkansas, we are not good enough that we can't go out every Saturday and give our best and expect that we're going to win. We're just not good enough. You came in, I think it was, uh, I guess Chad Morris was hired two days after you were announced. I think that's correct, somewhere around there, too, a couple days after. So did you, in your mind as an athletic director, you know, you've got a long history. You've been in business 25 years and uh, obviously came here from Houston. Uh, Tom Herman, you hired over there. Did you, in your mind, did you look at this, this football program and have expectations in terms of, you know, where do we need to be at a certain point in your mind where we, to be successful in your mind? Did you have a goal? I didn't. I mean, going into this season, uh, quite honestly, I thought we had an opportunity uh, to be 3-1 and one or 4-0. and oh. We're 2-2. Two and two. Um, Am I disappointed that we're 2-2? Two and two? I'm disappointed in the way we played on Saturday. I'm disappointed in the fact that we lost that game on Saturday. Um, but that, um, you know, I try not to set... Um, say that this is we've got to be this but you know as you we all do this as I'm a fan sometimes and I'll look and I'll break down our schedule and I say man we got a great chance to win that game a great chance to win that game probably not going to win that game here's how here's our path to get to a bowl game and these first four games we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as a program from last spring through the summer uh, to this past Saturday to be three and one four and oh and, and we're not there but the season is not over. We've got eight more games to play. Um, there's a lot of teams out there in college football right now that are two and two, some that are one and three, some that are 0 oh and four. 
We're two and two. We got a big game against another two and two team on Saturday that's fighting for their lives quite candidly. They don't want to be 0 and 2 in the Southeastern Conference. They don't want to lose to the University of Arkansas. They are not going to feel sorry for us. And we're not going to feel sorry for us either. Uh, we're looking straight ahead, and we've got to put the San Jose State game behind us, and we've got to start preparing for a great game against Texas A&M on Saturday. Obviously, you've got a fan base, obviously, who's uh, not happy. You know, you're never happy when you, when you lose to a team. Again, you're supposed to, to, to win. But why don't you share with this group here and the folks that are listening maybe some of the challenges that you see that, that Chad Morris either, one, came in and inherited or the things that he's having to deal with now that make it a challenge to get this program where it needs to get back to. Well, first and foremost, we're playing in Southeastern Conference. We're playing in a conference where everybody has similar resources and great facilities and great coaches. And right now, we're at the bottom looking up at 13 other programs that are a step or two ahead of us within the Southeastern Conference. So that's the biggest challenge is we've got to be patient as we take a step and then another step and another step. It's not going to happen Overnight, you talked about Tennessee's record in the last 15 games versus the Florida Gators. I think you said it was 14 and one that Florida is against Tennessee. Whoever thought that Tennessee, with all the pride that they have in their program, would be lose 14 out of the last 15 games in that rivalry versus Florida? But it is tough, tough to win football games. Tough to win football games in the Southeastern Conference and. Everybody's, you're going to get everybody's best effort. And I promise you, Texas A&M could care less if we lost to San Jose State this past Saturday. They want to come out and kick our tails. You, and, you, and you believe, I know you have, you have a certain amount of fans here and with our fan base that said, you know, we, we shouldn't be in the SEC. We, you know, remember we're in the, we were in the old Southwest Conference. We should be in the, the Big 12. Are you happy being in the SEC and glad to be here? We believe we're Absolutely. Here. Come on. We, we, we can compete in the Southeastern Conference. We've proven in the history of our program we can compete in the Southeastern Conference in football, basketball, baseball, and all of our sports. Uh, we're <laughs> our football program's not where it is. Quite honestly, if our football program was where we all thought it would be, I probably would not be sitting here doing this interview. Chad Morris would probably not be getting criticized across the state right now if this football program was where we all wanted it to be right now. Uh, talk about the difficulty. I mean, uh, and of course, Arkansas, again, this is, we've seen six or seven years where we, this is not the first time we've, we've tripped up to a, a team that we were favored to win or a non-Power 5 conference. How difficult is it being with a Razorback Foundation or being the athletic director when you have these games and you have your alumni that aren't happy? How difficult does that do for you to do your job? It, it's not difficult to do our job because, th yes, there, there's a, a vocal group of Razorback fans that are expressing their opinion and frustration, but I promise you I'm getting the same level of support on the other side with people that understand what our program is going through that are telling us it's going to be okay, and I'm getting some positive emails and positive phone calls and positive text messages, and people are reaching out to continue to give us the encouragement and tell us to keep it. Keep this going in the right direction. You've got the right man leading your football program. We've got the right man leading our athletic program. Stay the course and try to block some of that negative noise out. Yeah, we, uh, I remember there's a, I think there's this trophy around here with a man on it that you know, Frank Brules, that used to be, he was an old football guy. And so he actually would be, obviously, uh, was known to get involved uh, with the coaching staff. Uh, decisions. So that's not something that uh, Hunter Yurichek does involve, as far as uh, getting involved with his head coaches and assistant coaches and those kind of things. It's not. And, uh, you know, I, as I've been here now for two years and heard story after story of Coach Broyles, I have the utmost respect for Coach Broyles as a coach and as an administrator. And he made decisions in his era that he thought were in the best interest of the University of Arkansas and the football program and the athletic program. And now in the Hunter Yurichek era, I'm making decisions what I believe to be in the best interest of our football program, and it's not to get into Coach Morris's business with X's and O's and who his staff is. That's, his, that's what we hired him as a head football coach. He's got to make the decisions on who his staff is. He's got to make the decisions on personnel and the X's and O's and the game plan. And my role is to support Chad Morris and to support John Chavis and Joe Craddock and our staff and those young men uh, that are in that locker room battling each and every day and to make sure that they understand that their director of athletics is with them. I, I have a tradition that I started when I was in AD at Coastal Carolina where I stand outside the locker room door before every game and I shake every player's hand and I stand outside the locker room door after every game and I shake every player's hand, win or lose. And I want our young men in that program and our coaching staff to know that I am always in that foxhole and I'm always there for them. And I, I believe that's my role as a director of athletics. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, 
I got a few more things and we'll open up to the audience here in a few minutes. Uh, I, I mentioned you did not hire, I guess you'd only been on, on the staff for two days when, when uh, Coach Morris was hired, but you did hire a, a few new folks, including uh, Eric Musselman. You've gotten great reviews, a lot of great things about him. Talk about how that hire has sort of developed and, and how people are receiving him and what he's doing on campus. Well, I think he's been received very, very well. I mean, he is a marketing person's dream and how he handles social media, um, his the passion of the Razorback fans will show out once this program is headed in a direction and is where we think it can get to. The schedule of the last two, three years was already decided before you came on board. So talk about how you handle future scheduling. I know we have, we're at Notre Dame next year. I think we have Tennessee next year. Just talk about the challenge. You know, booking schools, you have to pay million, million and a half. Talk about the challenge sure. of that. Well, we're trying to do more regional games that I think will help bring some. I mean, one of the things I think that really made the Southeastern Conference special before the evolution of, of TV and, and how it's kind of every game's on TV now is that fans would get in a car and drive from one SEC community to another. And so really focused on more regional games like the four game series we have with Oklahoma State, I think is a great regional series. Memphis is, I think, is a great regional series for us to get Memphis, uh, Tulsa, another team that their fans can drive over. And so our focus is on uh, more of those regional teams that I think really can help us sell some tickets to our visiting fans and have more of an interest even to our fans without, throughout the state of Arkansas. Uh, it's sort of been a, a thing that we do every year when we bring in the athletic director, uh, but it's a little bit different this year when we ask the question. For so many years, it was with Arkansas where they ever play Arkansas State. Well, as Sully said in his intro, uh, you've already seen the, the games with UALR lined up, UAPB. Just talk about the future. Uh, and, and do you look at Arkansas State down the road? I'm not going to say we would never look at Arkansas State down the road, but what we've done now is just taken that first step. And we'll see if there's a second step after that first step. But the game so far, we've gotten a positive response to the games with UALR and as well as Pine Bluff, and we'll play Pine Bluff and football here in a couple of years. And again, that's another game that I think a regional game that will have interest throughout the state. Obviously, a game versus Arkansas State and, and any sport will have some interest uh, across this state. So whether it happens or not, I'm not going to make any guarantees one way or the other as I sit here today. As a group here, do, were you glad to hear just the, the combination of playing UALR and, uh, and uh, UAP, UAPB? Is that, is that a positive? That's something that we never was able to say before uh, until your arrival. So that's obviously a, a great legacy moment. I uh, also wanted to mention two team reunions this year. I saw we were going to have the 88-89 uh, Cotton Bowl team, the football team. You're going to honor them. I guess maybe 2020, not this year, but uh, is it next year? It no, this it's year? this year. This year. Quinn reminded me that on the way down. Yeah, I was yeah. say, Quinn, I should, I should know that. This year and next year, you should know. Yeah, yeah. two great team, Cotton yeah. Bowl team. He didn't want me to talk about the 1990 season, but he wanted me to focus on 88 and 89. Is that right, Quinn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you're also going to have the, the 69 team, then the anniversary of the, uh, the big shootout? The big shootout played probably one of the, the greatest games in the history of college football. Have you had a chance to watch the game or you just heard about I it? I have not, but I've had plenty of people from the 69 team tell me about it. Watch everything, <laughs> watch everything but the fourth quarter. Right. Turn, turn it yeah. off and leave after yes. that. Yeah, and so also, too, uh, John Richardson, I mentioned him, 50th anniversary of the first African-American ever to receive a scholarship at Arkansas. Yeah, and we're going to really celebrate John's legacy next year as we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the University of Arkansas. Uh, Nolan Richardson Court. Big announcement coming about when that's going to be kind of unveiled here in the next uh, day or two. And so I asked okay. for some feedback from fans last week. You know, I, I'll use social media from time to time. I've turned it off here for the last 24 hours for good reason. <laughs> but uh, last week I asked for fan feedback um, on what they wanted to see on the design of uh, Nolan Richardson Court. Anybody want to take a guess at what the number one thing I received? Slobbering hog. Did you, hey, listen, did you ever think in your career you would think you'd get an email about slobbering hog? Slobbering hog. You know, it wasn't Scotty Thurman that won a national championship. It was that slobbering hog. <laughs> uh, but, again, an exciting moment to be able to do that in honor of, of Nolan. It, it, it really is. And uh, Coach Richardson's really excited about it. Coach Musselman's done a great job of engaging Coach. And if he's available, he's going to come and kind of be an honorary coach at that game, the uh, red-white game on October the 5th. And so... Um, he, he's still very much a part of our program. Real quick before we open it up, uh, what about the legislation in California about paying the players? What's, what's, your, what's your stance as an athletic director in the SEC on that? Yeah, and, we, and we've been asked by our attorneys uh, at the NCAA really not to, to talk on that, but I can tell you as a, as a father of uh, two student athletes now, my oldest son that's graduated from 
um, college now and, and Jake who's there that the student athlete experience is better than it has ever been. Uh, we are investing a significant amount of money um, in our student athletes. And what I always go back on is being a student athlete is a voluntary activity. It's a heck of a commitment, but no one is making you be a student athlete. No one's making you put your name out line and sign that scholarship. That's something that you do and you understand when you sign your name on that NLI what comes with that and what doesn't come with that. And so if there's an opportunity for you to make some money as a student athlete or not as a student, but just as a person off your name, image, and likeness, right now that's not as a student athlete. And so you ought to take that opportunity and go somewhere else with that. that that's kind of my focus on that. One of the reasons that's pushing the needle, and you, you commented on when you were hired, the day you were hired, is that you know a lot of people look up and they see coaches that are fired and are getting paid $10 million or $12 million for, for, poor, for poor performance. So do you understand, just from a money standpoint, how, how crazy the money is? I imagine you deal with it every day. Yeah, there, there's a significant amount of money uh, being generated in college athletics, throughout college athletics, whether it's a television network, an apparel company. Um, but what I know, as I look at our budget of $125 million, that there's $125 million, whether it's in the salary of our coaches, it's being reinvested into our student athletes. You can't tell me that the student athletes at the University of Alabama don't want to play for Nick Saban. He's one of the best, if not the greatest football coaches in all of college football. And if you go to Alabama, you're going to Alabama because you want to play for Nick Saban because you think he can get you ready for the NFL. And so there's a, and also you look at the enrollment and how that's skyrocketed at, the, at Alabama since he's been there. Um, their university enrollment's up. And so, yes, you're, you're paying significant amount of money for your coaches, but that's because your student athletes want to play and learn under the best coaches. All right. If you've got a question, I want you to stand. I'll repeat your question. And real quick, too, before we go, I want to mention building champions and Razorbacks for life. Please stay if you've got a question. You want to mention that real quick, though? Sure. I mean, that, that's our mission, and that's what we stand for day in and day out. And, that's, uh, and really what that is is uh, my job as a director of athletics is to work with our coaches and our administrative staff and our support staff each and every day to create opportunities for our student athletes to have success academically, athletically, and in their personal development. And I tell our student athletes, if you take and make the most of those opportunities that we're creating for you, first of all, you're not going to fail at the University of Arkansas. You're going to earn your degree. You're going to have an opportunity to compete for and win championships. And you're going to leave the University of Arkansas prepared to be a champion in whatever you decide to do in life. Yeah, and that's I what our mission is. Did not have that back when I played. It's amazing that you guys offer those kind of they services. They didn't have that when you No, <laughs> no we did But you turned out to be a champion regardless, hey, Dave. host just said, get your butt to class, Basil. That's all he said. All right, anybody got a question? First question, anywhere. All right, please stand, Bill. Twenty-eight athletes have left the program. You want to comment on that? Well, well, you'd have to ask those twenty-eight athletes why exactly they left. And I, I don't like to refer to them as bad apples, but I think when you have a coaching change, sometimes you're just not a great fit for the new staff. Um, I'll use my son as, as an example. He was recruited to be a preferred walk-on at Colorado by Mike McIntyre. He loved Coach McIntyre. A new coach came in, and right or wrong, my son was not a great fit for that new coach. And now he feels like he's at a place um, working with Coach Morris at where he is a better fit. And so sometimes when you have a staff change, one coach and one staff recruits you, and it turns out you're just not a great fit under that new staff. Yes. I would agree with you. Um, we, we have uh, probably in our society and college athletics put way too much of a premium on winning. And college athletics was created, if you go back into history, it was created to help develop young men and women as part of the educational system at the university. Okay? Um, but you want to ask why coaches buyouts 
are so high in their contracts is because we don't have a lot of patience in college athletics right now, and coaches want that protection. I and mean, if, if I'm going to come in in two or three years, I'm not going to get that program to where you think it should be, and you're going to let me go. i got to have some, some protection um, in those contracts. And so um, I think we have put a, a huge premium. And you know why we put a huge Because we talked about the money. There is so much money in college athletics that we have lost sight about really – uh, what college athletics is supposed to be about, and it's the development of those young men and women that are on their respective playing fields. You mentioned already social media. I mean, it, it's unlike anything other because you get so much direct response. You also get a phone call from a booster. How difficult is it? When, you know, you, do you, do you are you okay with fans being upset about where the program is now from a football standpoint? Do you understand how frustrating it is just because of the history of the program? Absolutely. I mean, a, a fan, you can have your opinion. That's what makes college athletics so special. And it's not just our fans that are frustrated with being 2-2 two and two right now. I guarantee if you get on the message boards for Texas A&M, their fans are pretty frustrated about being 2-2. Two and two. And I bet North Carolina fans are frustrated because they lost to Appalachian State this weekend. And I bet Georgia Tech fans are frustrated because two weeks ago they lost to the Citadel. That's what makes college athletics so special is the fandom and being a fan, and fans are entitled to their opinions. With, with social media, your son's a player. Nick Starkle came out and said yesterday, talk about his Bieber shirt, and just having to respond. It's just how difficult it is with, with that. When, you know, back when we played, we didn't have any of that. How difficult it is that as a kid to deal with that kind of 10,000 followers and pressure and everybody's looking? And Yeah, I mean, we, we really tell uh, all of our student athletes, whether times are really good or times are bad, to stay off social media. It's, uh, there, there's nothing good that's going to happen from social media. And that's hard to tell someone that's 18 to 22 to kind of stay off your Instagram, stay off your Twitter, um, because, you know, here's what happens. You know, last week, everybody's going to tell you how good you are through social media. This week, they're going to tell you how bad you are through social media. And, and it's not, neither one's right or wrong. Um, and so it's better just to stay off of that and try to tune out that noise and, and, and close those ranks inside the walls of, of your football program. You had uh, last week, you know, Coach Morris, you know, he decided for what a way he's connects with his kids. He did the club dub deal in the locker room. Is that something that you allow your coaches, hey, Coach, Coach Mossman, whatever you think works with your players, go for it? Absolutely. I mean, if history uh, follows through with Coach Musselman, he'll be taking his shirt off at some point in time and running around the court without his shirt on. That's what he did in Nevada. And so, um, you know, you're trying to energize 18 to 22-year-old kids, and um, it is hard to win a football game. Very hard to win a football game. It doesn't matter if it's Colorado State, Portland State, San Jose State, Alabama. It's hard to win a football game. And you need to celebrate that. You work so hard for 12. Think of this. These young men, they train all winter long, all summer long, all fall long for 12 opportunities to play their craft. And, man, if you win one of those, you better celebrate it. You better celebrate You know this, right? You do, better do, celebrate. Do you, have a, do you have a dance move? No. I do yeah. not have a yeah. dance move. I, um, I just hang out in club, though. Yeah. Uh, question? Yes. He just, Duly noted. Yeah, just said if you want to see passion, yeah, it'd be a sellout. I think it would be. Uh, and listen, the fact that you you've, you've gone down that road is something we a lot of us thought we would never see. What about uh, what about Pepsi Coke? What's you know, do you, do you, do you hear? Do you hear? Let me listen. Right, right. I mean, it's amazing how many people bring that up. They do. They bring it up a lot. And right now, we still have a university-wide contract. It's just not a department of athletics. University-wide contract with PepsiCo is their official soft drink of uh, the University of Arkansas, and so that's really all I have to say about that. <laughs> so that's, that, that's, that's above your uh, above your pay grade. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's a common uh, misconception. That that is a university agreement, not a Department of Athletics agreement, and so um, we're a little bit at the mercy of the university with that. Now I do have to ask this. That, so what it was a you've been on those staff now a year and a half. Is it two, two years? Two, year, two, two years, years of December. So you had no connections with the state coming in. Really, really no connections. So you've been here two years. Yeah, this group's in you twice. Everybody's gotten on you. So how do you feel about being in Arkansas? What's the two years been like? For you? Uh, my wife and I and uh, Brooks, our son, and now Jake, who's moved here as well, and our oldest son is uh, sitting on our couch looking for a job. If any of you guys got any jobs, let me know. I'll send him your way. But uh, we all love the state of Arkansas. It's, uh, you know, being from uh, North Carolina, this has very much a North Carolina 
feel, where people are very down to earth, very welcoming. It's a very welcoming state, very welcoming community here in Little Rock and up in northwest Arkansas. And it has been a very easy transition for my entire family to be a part of the state of Arkansas. You obviously you're here under uh, tough circumstances coming off a loss like this. But what you're telling everybody is that uh, you believe in Chad Morse. You believe he's going to get the job done. It, it may take a while. But, but you believe that they're on the right track? I do. I, I, I told Chad Morris that yesterday morning when I went over to his office, and he, he was really, really down, really down for not only for Saturday, but uh, you and I talked about it. he had a loss of one of his former players um, that he learned about in the early morning hours on, on Sunday. And uh, he, he was really down, and he took full responsibility. And I said, Coach, I want you to know uh, – you are our football coach. You are my football coach. You have my full support. This program, in spite of the loss on Saturday, I know it is headed in the right direction. I see it headed in the right direction. Did we take a step back on Saturday? Absolutely. Are we all disappointed that we lost on Saturday? Absolutely. Should we have lost on Saturday? Absolutely not. But Chad Morris has got our football program headed in the right direction, and we're just going to have to be patient Patient than most of us want to be. More patient than most of us want to be, including myself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Hunter Urichek, everybody. Great job, Hunter. Thank you. Bill Schneider next week. Coach will be up here for pictures for 50-yard line members and sponsors.